everybody, this is Betsy Veldman for Paper Tray Ink and welcome back for another Make It Monday. This week I'm going to show you a technique um, that I'm calling a DIY cover plate. Uh, the cover plate dies from Paper Tray are some of my favorite dies. With one quick pass through your machine you can have a beautifully die cut card front. Um, but I'm going to show you how you can take almost any other die shape from your collection and create a similar effect. It takes a bit more work of course and several passes through a die cut machine instead of just a single pass, but it's kind of a fun technique to play around with and just a way to expand uh, the use of your dies. So for today's project I'm going to be using the arrows from the Cupid's Arrow set. Now they come wired together and I have not separated them yet so I'm going to be using them this way. Just um, makes it easier to line them up. Um, if you've cut them apart you can still definitely use them. Just takes a bit more effort uh, to get everything lined up. Alright so before you do any cutting um, you're going to want to do a little bit of pre-planning and think about how uh, your die cut pattern is going to fit um, onto your cardstock panel and you're going to want to plan a little bit so that you um, get some evenly spaced cuts and an uh, evenly spaced uh, repeating pattern. Uh, for the arrows that I'm using today it's going to be really easy to line them up. Um, I'm just going to do a series of uh, two rows across with the with the arrow dies. Um, it's not going to cover my complete card front. I could possibly get three cuts, but I'm kind of liking the way um, it's going to look with just uh, two rows. Um, and there, these, this is going to be really easy to line up since it's a fairly large die and um, with straight edges. I think I can pretty easily eyeball that. But depending on what shape you choose to use for this technique, uh, you might want to um, maybe even pencil um, some guides for yourself to help you line everything up. But for, for this, what I'm using, I can, I'm pretty confident just eyeballing it. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to do my first cut. And to do that, put my cardstock panel onto my cutting plate. And I'm going to position my die right about there. And you can see where I'm going to be creating two rows of the arrows. So I'm going to leave enough space so that they'll be pretty even down the center. I'm just going to make sure that it's straight and post-it notes are your best friend when you're die cutting when you have something that needs to stay put. I'm just going to secure that and put my other plate over the top and go ahead and run it through my machine. Okay, so there's our first cut. Now the the actual die cuts, you're going to want to, you might want to hang on to those. It, I'll explain later, but it's going to depend on how you want to do your stamping later on. And actually depends on which dies and stamps you're using. I'll explain that in a little bit. But for now, just hold on to those keep them on a pile. And I'm going to go ahead and do my next cut. Now for my next cut I'm just going to leave a little space. I'm going to line it up. You can see here. I'm just going to nestle those points of the arrows in with the next cut. Make sure everything is straight. And just go ahead and run that through. And again, I'm just going to pull these out and hang on to those. For my project today, I'm not actually going to be using them. But like I said, you might need yours, depending on your dies. So hang on to them if you think you might need them. Alright, and then I'm just going to continue on die cutting these arrows 
in rows until my entire panel is covered. Alright, now on this, I'm going to start the second row here, and I'm going to stagger them. You can see I don't want them perfectly lined up like this. I want to get more of a staggered effect. So for this next cut, I'm going to position it right about there. And that's just kind of a personal, whatever you think looks good. Depending on what die you're using, you might want to line yours up, you know, perfectly. Depends on what look you're going for and what shape die you're using. You might want to die cut them more into like a grid, a grid pattern. Okay, and then going to do my last cut here. And again, just lining that up, making sure it's straight. There we have all of our cuts made into our panel. You can see how it gives a very similar effect to what you would get with the cover plate. Okay, for my next step, I have another um, panel of white cardstock, same size as the one that I've been die cutting from, and I am going to take some foam adhesive and I'm going to just put some foam here along the edges and adhere that panel to the other white back panel that we're going to use for the background. And the reason I'm just putting the foam along the edges is because I'm going to take the coordinating stamps and I'm going to stamp them inside the die cuts. And just by putting foam along the edges, sometimes um, if I would put the foam all in the center here where I want to do my stamping, sometimes that can kind of get in the way while I'm trying to stamp. So I'm just going to put the foam along the edges and that'll keep it, um, hold it in place, but it won't get in my way while I'm doing my stamping. Alright, so I've chosen some ink colors here. I have orange zest and tropical teal, raspberry fizz, and royal velvet. And I'm um, going to be just stamping the coordinating arrow images inside those um, die cut arrows. Now, when you get to this step, it depends on what die you chose to use to do this technique. Um, I told you to save all of your arrow or all of your die, actual die cuts because you might want to use those. Um, some of the dies and stamps, some of the dies are actually smaller than the coordinating stamps. For example, I use this same technique here on this card and this uses um, the large arrow or chevron die from um, the monthly moments March set and that was designed by Heather Nichols and a lot of her dies and stamps, the stamps are actually a little bit larger than the than the die cut. So if you're using a set like that, um, what I actually did here is I saved all of my all of my cutouts and I did the stamping onto the actual die cut and then nested it back inside instead of um, 
doing the stamping directly onto the background like we're going to do here on the sample today. So, like I said, depending on what which uh, die and stamp combination you're using, you might need to do your stamping onto your die cuts. But for my project today, I can do my stamping directly onto the background cardstock because this uh, these stamp images, the arrows, are smaller than the die cuts. So I can go ahead and just stamp right into the opening die cut area. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm back and all of my stamping is finished. I have all of the arrows stamped inside of the cutouts. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to add a few more um, foam adhesive pieces under the center portion here, which I had left without so that they didn't get in the way of my stamping earlier. But now things are kind of flopping around a little bit. so. I'll add a few more pieces of foam here and there just to secure everything. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, and then I have, I'm going to adhere that finished panel now to a tropical teal card base. And then for our sentiment, I have a die cut here, a thank you die cut, which I die cut from Raspberry Fizz cardstock using the wonderful words, thank you die. And I'm just going to take a little bit of liquid adhesive and adhere that. If I can get it started. Gonna adhere that right about there, layered over top of our die cut panel. Okay, so there you go. There's our uh, Make It Monday project for today. Kind of a different way of creating a cover plate effect using um, just about any other regular die you might have in your collection. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you have time this week to play along and. Uh, can't wait to see what you come up with using your dies. Thanks for joining me. This has been Betsy Veldman for Paper Tray Inc.